PoePolitikin.com. Welcome back to Poe Politikin. I'm now politicking with Emerson Wendy. What's good, bro? Man, what's up, Clay? How you living? Chilling, man. So the first thing, I just want you to talk about your name a little bit. Emerson Wendy. That's a little, that's um, unique. <laughs> yeah, that's my porn star name, man. It's the middle name of the street I was raised on, man. Emerson Wendy, baby. Yeah. That's what's up. And then I know you're from, um, you're from North... North County, San Diego, Oceanside, you know, we out here too in Vista, so I just want you to talk about your background, how you got involved with music, you know, what made you fall in love with it, do it as a career. Oh yeah, man, as you said, I'm from Oceanside, Oceanside, stand up and get yourself a pat on the back, big time. But yeah, man, how I got started, man, I was a hustler out there in them streets, man, in the oldest, doing what I was doing, and I had some homeboys, man, who was rappers, heard their album. And I liked what they was doing with the flow, but I hated the production, man. And I told them that because I'm an honest cat, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and they were like, yeah, 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 the producer don't really have all the equipment he needed. So I went with a bag of money and uh, I bought a studio. <laughs> then from then on, I kind of just started playing with it and made a career out of it. Yeah, I am today, so. Yeah, so I would say, as far as the San Diego rap scene, what would you say, How do you, what would you think about it? What would you say about it? I mean, as far as the rap scene here in the old SD period, man, there's a bunch of talent out here, man. There's so many artists who can go to the next level. But the main thing we got to do, man, is step our music business up. You know, like everybody thinks it's free to get in the game, and it really ain't, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Ennis go have a brand new artist, they're going to put a budget behind them and ensure his success. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's what we don't do here on a regular basis. And that's what I want to see improved is just us step our business of it up. You know what I'm saying? And then what what were some, like, I guess, like, three tips that you would give them for stepping their business up? Well, the first one is to be aware of the budget. You need a budget. And then you have to market and promote your projects. You can't just put the stuff up on the YouTube and think it's going to get a million hits. So that's to happen. A lot of bloggers have to get behind that project. A lot of people have to be discussing some shit at the same time for it to go viral. You dig? So if that don't happen, it's just going to sit there and it's only going to be the friends that you have who are ever going to hear that shit. And that's not enough to get rich for anybody unless you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? No, that's not how it is. And that's just being honest with you. So. Yeah, and as far as the, what would you say as far as the quality, the quality of the music? Oh. I mean, the most important thing beyond the other stuff is the fact that your music has to be quality. You gotta record that stuff in a professional studio. You can't record that shit in your basement unless you got some bomb ass shit in your basement. You dig what I'm saying? So, I just know as far as like the radio, for instance. They can love your song, but if it doesn't fit programming and the quality of the other people that they play, then they ain't gonna play it. Even if you think it's the best shit in the world, it's gotta be quality, you dig? So you really gotta pay attention to that. All right, and then as an artist, you know, I know you're 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 actually a, you know a performer. You make beats, and you also write. So, what would you say makes you unique and um, original, stand out, far as a hip hop artist? I mean, I'm just unique because I have my own unique story. I mean, I'm not gonna say like I'm up to everything that anyone ain't never done before, but I put my own unique spin to what I do because it's my unique story. And uh, I'm not afraid to try new things when it comes to music. I'm not just a hip hop artist, you know what I'm saying? I'm not just a rapper. I listen to all different types of music, and I feel like all of that kind of bleeds into what I create. I'm not. I mean, I'm not scared is what I'm saying. And, you know, in other words, like some people feel like if I just make hard shit, that I have to make hard shit every time I get in the studio. Mm-hmm. But me, if I feel it's a hit, I'm going to record that bad boy. And I don't feel like it's stepping outside myself to try to do that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then far as uh, hip hop politics, what would you say is anything you like really don't like about, you know, the politics of the game or... I need you to kind of explain to me which set of politics you're talking about, and then uh, I'll elaborate. As far as the like the, the business part of the hip hop game. Oh, okay, okay. What well, those? What I mean? I don't feel that that's even like politics per se. I just feel like it's business, and I'm never uncomfortable with business. That's the way it goes. You know what I'm saying? So. The underground hip hop artists who feel that there's a lot of politics in the game and shit like that. <laughs> and they feel that way. Well, here's why you would feel that way. Here's why artists would feel that way. It's because they feel like if I have the best song, 
everybody should just know that. And everybody should go listen to it. I mean, the, I mean, shit, the internet should just find it. The radio should just play it. The DJ should just motherfucking spin it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not how this shit works. There's business behind it. So when you hear about an artist, that's typically because somebody put a, a budget to market and promote it. Promoters get paid. You feel me? So they promote what they make bread promoting. So why would they just go promote everything for free? Because I know how this shit goes. All the people who've been promoting me along the way, just being real, I can't think that when I make $100 million, I'm going to come back to every motherfucker on the internet and say, you know what, here's 10 grand for you promoting me and help make me a superstar. Like, I doubt that's what I'm going to do. But what I do have to do is pay the motherfuckers who like, nah, 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 nigga, I need my money right now. And you know what I'm saying? It's like if they ask you for it, then you got to give it to them. If that's their process, if that's their hustle, you got to respect everybody's hustle. The radio has like a, a great rapport with the major recording labels. That's why you typically hear a lot of their shit dominating the scene with the radio. You can't be angry with that. You know what I'm saying? But then again... The, uh, the labels also sign artists that fit within the radio program. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you say it's a, well, like, like a politics. I say it's a, excuse me, I say it's a hustle. Yeah, I say so. You What you're saying is basically you just got to know the game and play it. You got to know the game, man. So you got to understand politics to succeed with politics around you because there's always some politics at work in every single situation in life. I call it mind fucking. There's always a mind fuck at work around you, man. You just have to understand that it's there. Can you give us some examples of that? I mean, as I said, I mean, that's one. A label has a great rapport with the radio, clear channel and shit like that. So a lot of the labels dominate the radio scene. So either go fuck with them and try to get signed. And if you want to get signed to a major, you have to have some songs that fit within the radio. Or there's not a whole lot they can really do for you. Huh. And, but then uh, let's think of other mindsets, because this happens to me a little bit now. I found enough success that people hit me on the Facebook all the time asking me, hey, Wendy, man, let's do a song together. Let's do some pictures. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's like, I'm totally down to fuck with niggas. I am. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, unless you like the solid cat from like my hometown, the old who I fucked with prior to doing what I'm doing, or you just show hella love, hella support, and have a worthwhile shot getting into the game but all of those factors have to add up and there's some other things that have to make sense is that they understand business you know what I'm saying uh-huh. I'll fuck with them but other people have to understand that this is my motherfucking job now you know what I'm saying like I can't just do a song with and for everybody who's like, oh, shit, it would be cool to do a song with this nigga because now I'm making money doing it and there's no knock, there's no diss, but just people kind of have to respect that this is what puts food on the table for a lot of these men now. You know what I'm saying? So if they just wouldn't have been ultra nice to everybody who asked and the answer isn't ever no or I need some money, then it's like, we're going to take a big step back and it's going to negate all of the hard work that we put in to get to the point that they even want to do a song with you in the first place. Yeah, I remember uh, one of my homies, he, he he's real big in music and he gave me this advice. I want to know what you think about it. He, he told me, like, you don't want to work with amateurs. Like, he said, you always want to work with professionals. He said, it's a lot of amateurs. It sounded, that's what you're trying to say a little bit. Like, a lot of... Yeah, yeah, he's right about that 110%, man. Because, see, I'm a math guy, so I'm going to hit you with a little math, right? I'm a new artist trying to break into the game, and I'm doing a decent job at the moment. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, I don't have a ton of music out there. I just got the right kind of music in the world right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, if I go do... I mean, I think I opened up my emails this last past week. You know, I had, I think it was 18 people from all over the country, a few motherfuckers outside of America who wanted to do songs. A few of them were talking the right kind of shit. They was getting over them politics, as you kind of put it. (laughs) Them niggas offered me a dollar amount. You know what I'm saying? Would you take X, Y, and Z? to hop on this song that is, you know, I hit you with a link to a SoundCloud. Would you get on this song for this much? Yeah, being professional. So, 
that went to the top of the list as far as, like, I'm not going <laughs> to it or not. You know what I'm saying? But that went to the top of the list. So let's at least check that shit out. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Instead of the other 15 or 16 emails that came through with people just trying to be cool. Now, my people did go actually play all 15 songs, and a few of these artists got responses back. Like, all right, man, like, your song is actually tight. It seems like you got some nice stuff up on the web now just to holler at your people and see if we can't make something for Emerson to hop on. Like, let's get some money involved and let's do a little bit of this. But then we also wanted to hear the marketing plan, the promotion strategy, and all of those things. Because as what I was saying before is, if I got, say, I got six songs up on the web and people like those six songs, but then, say I was to say yes to all 18 of them people. Now I would have 24 songs that would probably hit the web within a, I mean a week. You know what I'm saying? Like, them songs will probably be on the YouTube next motherfucking week. Half of these dudes are going to pull a little game and be like, I'm going to put Emerson Wendy name first because he get a lot of hits on the YouTube and try to build their buzz that way. So now, where it fucks me up is this. It's affecting your brand. It's, it's fucking with my brand a little bit. And if they're not going to put the marketing dollars behind the record to make sure that it moves, it does well, then what it does is when a promoter hits me up trying to book me for a show, they going to go straight to the YouTube to see these stats count, man. People don't think these stats count. That's the first thing these motherfuckers look at. They want to know your stats. So... <laughs> If they go plug in my stats and they got to shift through five or six bad songs to find what is actually stamped by Emerson Wendy brand, mm -hmm. they ain't even going to get that far. They're going to hear three of them and be like, man, I thought you said this nigga was dope. You know what I mean? And, and then they off me and they on to the next motherfucker who ain't shot themselves in the foot. You know what I'm saying? They're going to go hit up Macklemore or somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're going to go fuck with somebody who ain't did that stupid shit. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I want you to talk about, you put out a very unique project. It's, it was the, uh, the Emerson Wendy Experience, and I, I heard it was a Scratch and Sniff uh, album, Smell Like Weed. Yeah, 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 man, yeah. So at the time, what happened when my mama had just passed away, so that album sounds a lot different from the one I'm doing right now, you feel me? But uh, my mama had just passed away, and her and my dad always had a love for the doo-wop, you know, so as a little kid, man, that's what I heard. I loved all the old records. Everybody does, I think, you know what I'm saying? So I actually infused the hip-hop and the doo-wop, and I made my own kind of flair, own kind of style, and that was, <coughs> excuse me, you know, and that was my intro to music. You did so, uh, but on this next album here, oh, okay, 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 I'll back up a little bit. The Scratch and Sniff thing. The Scratch and Sniff thing, it came about because, as you know, the piracy is on like all time high. You feel me, y'all? Mm -hmm. So, I wanted to give the fans a reason to actually go purchase a hard copy, a physical copy of an album again. It's something to get a little excited because I know when I was a kid and I got to buy albums at the store. I mean, you were attached to everything about it, the cover, the artwork on the inside. I mean, you knew who produced every song. You knew where it was recorded. I mean, you actually read that shit back in the days. Now, when people just go download it on a iTunes, you don't really get to experience the music the same way anymore. It's just kind of like some shit you hear. It's not some shit you hold and some shit you see. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I mean, that's what I did. I was like, how can I get people to purchase this shit? and give them a reason to. So I came up with the Scratch and Sniff and it worked out well, even though I technically haven't released that project. That project is probably gonna release after the one I'm doing now, but it's gonna be released completely different because it's outside of the, uh, the audience I'm doing right now. The project I'm doing now, it's for the streets. It's a little bit more about me, who I am, who I was, and what the fuck I was doing all the way through adulthood after I moved out of my mama's house. You know what I'm saying? And so, what, and what was that? It's about hustling. It's about going hard and doing what you need to do to protect your staff. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of big names on this project. You know, I've been blessed with that. You know, uh, I got uh, 2 chains, future French Montana, Flocka, my homeboy House of Bay. Uh, I got a lot of O-Sides up uh, finest on there. You know, I love the O, so I'm always putting it down for them. And they put it down for me, too, so... I got a few of them on it. And uh, a big surprise, it just happened like a couple of days ago, I found out that I ain't gonna be on this motherfucker. We're gonna do a song produced by Mr. Mike Will made it. You know what I'm saying? So that's gonna be a big one for your boy. But uh, I mean, top to bottom, man, 
it's gonna bang, it's gonna rock. I got other production on there, not getting a close. It isn't only myself. I got other production on there by like platinum award winning motherfuckers who done won real big Grammys before. Like this album is really gonna go, man. You gotta check it out. It's gonna be big. Yeah, and I say when the album posted, uh, what's the plans for the release date? Plans for release date is kind of just up in the air at the moment, but I'm thinking it's going to drop late March, early April. You know what I'm saying? Because I really want to promote the singles. I want to burn up the streets. I want to burn up the airways for a little while before I just put the project out there because I want it to be successful. You dig what I'm saying? So I want to put that proper, like, uh, you know, push behind it before I just push the button and say, here it is. You know what I'm saying? The people don't know about it. You know, obviously, I mean, they ain't going to purchase it if they don't even know it's it's almost on its way. You know mm. what I'm saying? So that's what we're going to do with that. And I was saying, as far as your music, do you try do you try to make it a purpose to, uh, you know, drop game in your music where people can, you know, learn something, apply to their life? Oh, man, I mean, completely, man. I mean, that's where I got a lot of my game from was the movies and, uh, and music that I heard and then, like, a few of my homeboys and shit like that. But, uh, so I always try to put that back into my project. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I got a song on the album, you know, it's about uh, black on black violence. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all we do is really smoke each other. And that's just kind of how it goes. So uh, I kind of discuss how I feel about it. And uh, I wish it would change. But, uh, I mean, you never know. I mean, it's the street, so some shit going to happen out here from time to time. But uh, I do discuss it on my album. And I hope to kind of enlighten the youth and, and just say, man, like, yo, it really don't need to be like this all the time so often over a lot of the stupid shit that it is over a lot of time niggas arguing at the club and just end up smoking a buck but smoking another black man you know what I'm saying that shit ain't cool so yeah I'm saying and you, then, huh, what's yeah, up well, uh, yeah I was saying can you just oh no you was going into it. what you been saying my bad oh yeah then I was saying I mean I got other songs on the album about about hustling and just sticking real true to your hustle, you know what I'm saying? And uh, how to stay a step ahead of the game. But then everything that it goes into being a boss, man, that's what the album is about, man. That's what I was, that's what I do, that's what I am. So I put a lot of boss up material in my music for motherfuckers to learn from, you know? So those who bossed up before me and I learned the game, I'm a boss up for the next one, you know what I'm saying? That's how it goes, that's how you do it. Sip, okay. Yeah, Valske, can you actually tell the listeners just five facts about you that they might not know? Five facts about me that they don't know, dang. That's one of the best questions anybody ever asked me. <laughs> appreciate it, appreciate it. I try. Yeah, shit, five facts about me that they don't know. <laughs> I don't drink a lot of soda. That's one. Uh... I'm a little more boring than I might appear to be, but then I'm a lot more fun. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm shit. I'm either at home on the couch or I'm down the sky. I'm down to hop out a plane at 15,000 feet and just soar like it ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how many that is. I love my family, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't discuss my family a whole lot in my music, on interviews and things like that, but I got some real good people around me who I love to death. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. I kind of just hit the most important thing. It might not be things that people don't know about because I don't discuss it a whole lot in my music, but I mean, I love my fans to death, man. It's all about them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, how many is there? That's four, that's five. That's three. You know? That's oh, damn. That's only. <laughs> you're kind of playing me a little bit, man. We might have to go back to the tape. I think that's fuck. Nah, no, but uh, let me think. Five things that they don't know about. I don't know, I mean, it's kind of all in my music, but those are the main things. Like, I really, as I said, I don't discuss the love for my family a whole lot in my music, but you buy the album and all that shit, you'll find out a whole lot about when you, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Oh, man, I really do put myself into my music, so for everybody who wants them last little kicky answer that I didn't give, he said I didn't give, I think <laughs> I was on number four, he said I was on three, you want the last two, uh. I'm sure you can find that someplace on the West Side Wendy store, you can go buy that sometime in April or late March, go check that out. That's what's up. And then far as the, like how you became successful, if somebody would say, what do you think the three keys to that were, what would you say? I mean, the three keys to success for me is this. I mean, you got to have the dedication. You got to dedicate yourself to your grind, man. It's got to be you. You got to be it. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of people, uh, 
hear some things that happen to me all the time. I always have artists kind of bumping up on me like, man, damn, man, let's get together. Let, man, let's work, let's work. Man, I'm trying to grind, I'm trying to this, I'm trying to that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they say, man, I've been an artist for like 15 years. I've been doing this since I was in middle school and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, damn, okay, that's what's happening. So how many uh, songs you got? Let me hear something. You know what I'm saying? And they'll be like, I mean, well, probably, I probably got about 15 songs, 10, 15 songs. And I'm like, damn, so they averaging a song a year. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that don't sound like a lot of dedication to your craft that you want so much from your craft. You know, right. like with me, I ain't even been an artist for two years quite yet from the day I recorded my first song to now. And I've already recorded probably 60 plus songs myself. You feel me? My, my first album, when I started to rap, I recorded that whole bad boy in 10 days, start to finish 19 records. I didn't even know what I was doing, but I did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like when you hear all these other cats who are saying, man, I want to do this, I want to do that. They really ain't giving the game what it needs. They're not dedicated. And then the second thing would be the sacrifice, which is kind of the same thing, but just a different way of putting it. You have to sacrifice wholeheartedly for things you want to sacrifice and give you spoils. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you feel what I'm saying, though? No. Yeah. It's kind of like a thing where it's like, I switched my surroundings, I gave up a lot of things that I had before to embark on the journey, you know what I'm saying? I sacrificed my health, my time, all kind of things, my money, sacrificed a lot of money to get where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? So, it's the old saying, you gotta put your money where your mouth is, and I think a lot of niggas don't do that. And then they don't sacrifice the other thing. But, I mean, their hierarchy of needs are all perfect and shit. And they don't understand why they can't get nothing from this. Because I'm around a lot of people all day who are finding success. But I see what they sacrifice. You feel what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know I mean? It's almost a thing that you would think a nigga who's making a million bucks a month. You think he be kicking it, chilling, doing all kind of shit. It's like, nah, bro. That dude work harder than the garbage man. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, I say, do you think it's, at the end of the day, do you think it's all worth it? Because it seems like some of them, like, they never even stop either. They just keep going, keep pushing. I'm like, why? You know, they already got it, so why keep? Because here's what I can see already in myself in my early stages of my career. It's definitely worth it, but here's why it's worth it, man. Because that's true what you're saying, that you see these motherfuckers who making so much bread, you would think, like, this nigga already got 50, 60, 100 million dollars. And you stare at his schedule, you'd be like, why is he on tour 300 days a year yeah. still? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because what ends up happening, bro, is as you embark on a trip like this, you start to find out that this shit is about a whole lot more than just yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I see it right now. Like, there's a lot of people who've helped me get to where I'm at. So there's a lot of people who are dependent on me to be successful. But mm. then, as you get a little bigger, you gain more and more fans. Then, after you've kind of handled all of your needs with people who, who you owe it to your family, your friends, like people you love, you give everything to them, you set them up and all of them are straight. Now it becomes about the third F, the fans. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody who supported you to be able to have all of these fantastic things, you can't forget about them either. Mm. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep going. These people, they want to see you, man. They want to feel you. They want to touch you. You know what I'm saying? They want to hear something new from your ass. So. Yeah. And your grind, it don't even become about the money no more. It becomes about the people who who supported you, the people who believed in you. Like, you can never give up on your fans unless you want them to give up on you. So that's why I would say it is worth it because you might be tired, you might be hungry. I mean, you might be alone or whatever you're feeling at the time, man. But when you see that fan who's seeing you for the first time, possibly the fifth time, and you see that twinkle in the eye like, oh, my God, like... This is fucking Jay-Z, man. Like, damn. And they just get to brush your sleeve with their fingertips. That's the story that that dude is going to tell in 20 years to his grandkids. Probably going to have a little cell phone picture right he's going <laughs> to save in his email. Uh, he hustling around his email so he don't lose that shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be a story when he's sitting there in 20 years with a grandkid. Like, 
I'll never forget the time of his own little son. Like, I'll never forget the time I spent a thousand dollars on a front row seat to go fucking see Emerson Wendy, man, yeah. and I got to just brush up against his, his sleeve real quick. I was so fucking cool, man. So you can never forget that this is sometimes a once in a lifetime experience for your fan. You can't give up on them. You know what I'm saying? You really got to be there for them. You got to be present to them. What would you like to Shit. tell your fans? You know, people have been supporting you. What's up, man? What would you like to say to your fans? I mean, I'm just too appreciative, man. I mean, I can never say thank you enough to the people who supported me thus far, the Wendy and Nation, man. I mean, I'm not here if I had no Wendians. You feel what I'm saying? Wouldn't nobody care if I didn't have no fans? So it really, it isn't me. It's me, but it's them. Why new people continue to find out about me each and every day? I mean, you probably wouldn't have called the phone and hit me on the email and stuff like that had a fan not put you on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, 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 I mean, so shit, I mean, like to all of them, I just gotta say I owe it all to you. I love you. You're always in my heart each and every day, man, and I thank you. My family thanks you. You know what I'm saying? That's real. And then who would you say your number one fan is? I would say I got a million of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just each and every support, I mean, it's really hard to, it's really hard to make that distinguish because, I mean, if you have real fans, you're going to have a bunch of fans who will argue over that top spot. And I love them all, you know what I'm saying? I mean... I would say, how would you... Has anybody, like... What have they did to show you, like, the most love? Like, have any fans did, like, any, like, wild stuff that you, like, wow, just overwhelmed you? I mean, people, you know, like, a reaction. You know, that, that might be a thing where you're like, damn, that's a big fan. I mean, you meet people for the first time thousands of miles from where you live, and they sing, like, all of your songs to you. You're like, oh, shit. But then I also have some other shit that was real cool happen. Man, I got a fan who changed his name to Little Wendy. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's deep. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he bypassed his own little username and created him new with little dude named Little Wendy on the web, man. Like, I actually put that in the song I just did the other day because it just hit me kind of hard. And I was thinking about it. Like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's dope. Like, I've hit the point to where a fan would do that. That's just real, man. And it's like, I never want to stop making great material for somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? That makes it fun, man. When you tired, I was tired when that, you know, when I started to record that record. I just had to do it. I got a deadline. I got to be, I got to be dependable. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But uh, that kept me up. It was like, I had slept for 18 hours but hadn't been to bed for like a few days I was up for a couple of days straight recording some records man but you would think I had 18 hours of sleep when that one line popped into my head you know I think uh how'd it go man shit it was the other day I think I said something like when you verified on Twitter bitch I need respect my little body dreams and I ain't even got it yet I got fans named little Wendy on the internet Wendy boy winning games and I ain't even in it yet you know what I'm saying yeah. Like, but it was just deep after I, I spit that line I was like oh I'm not ready to go you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah so they they motivate you inspire you then they motivate us just as much as we motivate them man and that's real shit you know what I'm saying that's what's up I appreciate you coming through politics with me man nah man it was fun politicking with you man I'm definitely gonna holler at all the big homies in the game and I'm gonna try to get you interviews with all of them cause I like the way you ask the real shit questions you know it isn't all about us I can I mean I can feel how you wanna help the fan the listener the new inspiring artist and kinda hit him with some game that's gonna pop out of like my mouth you know what I'm saying and that's real and I think the game really needs that you know the interviews need that so that's real man I got you yeah appreciate that man oh, it's nothing yeah, I would say, uh, you want to tell them how to contact you, how to hit you up, check out your music, everything? Yeah, man, I'm the easiest man on the web to find. Everything is just under Emerson Wendy. You know what I'm saying? Everything at Emerson Wendy. You know what I'm saying? Because that's me. Oh, politicking. Your number one source for hip-hop without all the, uh, well, politics. What's up, y'all? This your boy Emerson Wendy, and I put politicking with Tony West Side. Uh. Still the same, 
This what we gon' do. Three some in my two seater. 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 I got one bad bitch. 
in my front seat, just hoping Wendy gon' beat her. Got another bad bitch in my lap, nigga, cause this Lambo's a two-seater. So I drove him back to my left, she said, how much time until we get there? I asked the bitch, do you drive stick? Cause you know I got that dope dick. I'm like, damn. I'm thinking that Wendy boy gon' have so much fun, she blow me in the wind in my two-seater. And like Michael Jackson, I beat it. Oh, yeah. Yep, like Lil Wayne, I might eat it. Oh, yeah. This Lambo's my room. Tell your homegirl, put her head in my lap, but with a tongue, baby, let's go for room. Damn, damn. Till I ski, skirt, damn. Till I ski, skirt. I bust one, then I bust two, then I'm out the door, cause my dick hurts. Oh, yeah, said I'm Wendy boy, then that dope man, said I'm a dope boy, then that fly shit, and I'm a real nigga, so don't try this shit. Oh, yeah. Lambo is a drop. That photo, I don't need a my Bugatti is the truth. I'm finna make you a believer. I got plans. Yo. And you and you, so laugh up in my Rari, shawty, this what we gon' do. Three sum in my two seater, 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 three sum in my two seater. Okay, it go like one hoe, two hoe, you know. Let's jump up in my two dough. That Lambo built for you and me and that bitch there, oh, you know. Yo, which one do I choose, bro? That's the scenario with it's about to go down. What? Turn up the stereo, nigga. Do a big boom. My nigga, do a big. Windy boys with them dope oh, fresh. Yeah. With my back fitting in my boom mode. Boom. Pick two and then I zoom home. I'm like, damn. Boom. Cause a nigga do a big. Yeah. The windy boys so dope. Oh, yeah. That a nigga never big. Nah, nah. Double this, double that. My nigga like mini. Cause I do a really big. Cause if a nigga never choose what, yeah, nigga then a nigga never lose. Oh, yeah. Okay, it yeah, go like one hoe, two hoe, you know. Let's jump up in my two dope. Bugatti is the truth, I'm finna make you a believer, I got plans, you, and you and you, so laugh up in my Rari, shawty, this what we gon' do, three sum in my two seater, three sum in my two seater, three sum in my two seater, three sum in my two seater.